The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster was a devastating event, with 18 non-fatal injuries being directly attributed to the incident, including physical injuries from the hydrogen explosion and radiation burns, and one loss of life with a clear link to the radiation exposure from Fukushima. This nuclear accident was caused by the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, both of which hit the power plant and saw an additional 18,000 lost lives. Whilst it was 2011 when disaster struck, the aftermath lingers on even today. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster continues to this day to be the most severe nuclear accident since the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, with these two events being the only incidents ever classified as Level 7 on the INES, or International Nuclear Event Scale. Despite this horrifying March day being 10 years ago, more information is still coming to light on the disaster even in 2021. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent discoveries about the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. Robot finds possible melted fuel inside Fukushima reactor. Back in 2017, a robot carried out a three-day inspection inside the Fukushima reactor, uncovering what has been described as and likened to lava rocks inside. A robot lacks sentience, meaning sending a machine into such dangerous territory is the safest, most ethical means of carrying out research in Fukushima. The robot found a significant quantity of solidified lumps on the floor of the primary containment vessel underneath Fukushima's number 3 reactor, according to TEPCO. This impressive little robot was apparently the size of just a loaf of bread. Well equipped for the mission, the tech could even make it underwater. TEPCO explained the importance of a discovery like this, as this data from the robot could very possibly have been the first time melted fuel had been spotted since 2011, when the disaster first hit. Not only is this research interesting, but it is also vitally important. In order to decommission the plant, the fuel debris needs to be found. This is a crucial step that many experts believe could take years, even decades, to complete. While the findings from the reactor number 3 were promising, the little robot was not quite successful enough in its task at reactor number 2. By this time, the robot began to struggle with its movements and could not make it underneath the pressure vessel, where scientists speculate fuel may have melted. The Japanese government, in the December of 2016, estimated that covering the recovery costs of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster, including compensation, decommissioning and decontamination, could reach the sky-high 21.5 trillion yen, approximately 192.5 billion US dollars, and could easily take a minimum of four decades to resolve. This long time and high cost are in part due to high levels of radiation, resulting in a slow process in order for safety to be prioritized. Whilst the clock has been ticking away and the days on the calendar are showing that we are moving further and further away from the horrors of the Fukushima disaster, we are still nowhere near rectifying the damage that was caused, and it will be a long time before we are. Millions of tons of nuclear wastewater from Fukushima will be dumped into the sea. In the April of 2021, the Japanese government announced that beginning from 2023, more than a million tons of water contaminated from the Fukushima disaster would be released into the Pacific Ocean. An estimated 1.25 million tons of water have built up around Fukushima's power plant since the 2011 disaster. This is largely because TEPCO have been adding 200 tons of water into the reactors and the power plant site with each day intending to maintain and balance temperatures to stop the few reactor cores that are left from melting too. Now, more than 1,000 tanks on the site are filled with contaminated wastewater. Whilst most radioactive material is filtered out, tritium, a radioactive hydrogen isotope, is not filtered out and is most dangerous to our health. However, 10 years on from the horrors, this cooling water system is showing some flaws, as TEPCO no longer has the space to store the contaminated waste. The solution decided upon as of 2021 is to release the contaminated water gradually, bit by bit, over many, many years, into the Pacific Ocean. According to a spokesperson from the US State Department, this plan is, quote, 
in accordance with global accepted nuclear safety standards, as many nuclear plants all over the world regularly let small volumes of tritium into the sea. Some people aren't happy with this solution, however. Many have expressed their concerns that TEPCO may not be wholly accurate in their judgment of the water's safety. These fears are amplified by a study published in August 2020 which found traces of many other radioactive isotopes in the Fukushima wastewater. Many local fishermen have expressed concern about the fishing industry, and some are concerned for the health of wildlife. Overall, we can only hope for a sustainable, long-term, safe solution to this problem. Radioactive rat snakes could help monitor Fukushima fallout. The impact of nuclear accidents is colossal. Of course, the first concerns for most people are regarding any humans, from injuries to illnesses and unfortunately even fatalities. And while there are many factors to consider, economic, social and even how the political climate can be altered, perhaps one of the next most important aspects to consider is looking at the damage caused to the area. How safe is the area? Will it ever be safe again? And perhaps, rather frighteningly, how far has and will the contamination spread? So, as humans fled the area, the blissfully ignorant wildlife stayed put. Birds, snakes, all sorts of creatures alike, and of course flowers, trees and even the soil, are all left to be contaminated. Scientists have now begun to ask, as the flora and fauna are left in this radiation zone, can they help us find out about how the environment has been impacted in the long term by this traumatic event? The use of animals to monitor such a dangerous climate may seem cruel and unjust, though the truth is we use animals as bioindicators all the time, with the bioindicator simply meaning a living thing whose health can give us these ever so valuable insights. Frogs, for example, have permeable skin and are largely unable to detoxify, and are therefore monitored as a bioindicator for environmental pollution. The same is true of lichens, helping us monitor atmospheric pollution, as they rely on nutrients from the atmosphere due to the lack of roots. And perhaps the most famous bioindicator of all time is the canary in the coal mine, when their lack of singing showed their deaths, giving miners the slight advantage of time to get out quickly and safely. Now, these scientists are not planning on sending animals blindly into these nuclear zones and hoping for the best, much more ethically, they have chosen to study animals that are already within Fukushima, specifically the rat snakes. Hannah Gurk, the lead author of the study, explained that snakes were a good choice of a bioindicator due to their limited movement and their tendency to confine themselves to one local area, as they tend to travel just 65 meters each day. A bonus is also their long lifespan, allowing for a continued longitudinal observation, analyzing the spread of contaminants over time. Other animals, for example birds, move around too much, hindering the experiment. If the snakes stay local to one specific zone in the region, we can see how those contaminants are dispersed between and within distinct areas. Girk continued to say that the contaminants from the environment would be reflected in those of the snake. When speaking about Fukushima, she offered the statement, everybody expects Fukushima to be a barren wasteland full of mutated animals. In real life, it is quite beautiful. To gain the snakes as successful participants in this research, the scientists took to the hills and valleys of the Abakuma Highlands searching for their snakes. Girk said the team would wait by roadsides ready to capture the snakes as they crossed the road. They were then taken to Fukushima University to a lab ready to be fully kitted out with the necessary equipment. The team began by supergluing a small GPS tracker as well as a dosiometer a tool to measure levels of radiation, to a piece of tape that was then wrapped around the snake's body. The tape keeps their practices ethical, as after the study these trackers could be removed without causing any harm to the snakes. Nine taped snakes later, they were ready to go back to the wild where data would be collected remotely. The results revealed that most of the radiation exposure in the Fukushima exclusion zone found in the snakes came from contact with contaminated soil, trees and plants. Whilst that made up a whopping 80%, other factors did contribute too, most notably eating contaminated prey. This shows how the place of an animal in the food web, or chain, as you may have learned it at school, can have an impact upon its well-being following nuclear disasters, 
but also gives us a clearer picture as to how contaminants spread and move within an ecosystem. This research demonstrates not only the valuable role bioindicators play, but also the significant long-term impact of a nuclear disaster and how, even a decade later, these contaminants are not only still present, but moving and spreading through the environment. A disaster over a decade old showing no signs of going away anytime soon. Hopefully the future discourse surrounding the Fukushima disaster has more positive news and developments to share. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.